Hello, and welcome back to another Fedora Studio session. Uh, we're doing these Fedora Studio sessions for the Fedora Linux 41 release party, bringing in some speakers and folks to do a lot around the Fedora community to talk about what they've been up to in this last release cycle. So today, I'm happy to have Akashdeep Dar with us. Uh, he has been a Fedora contributor since 2019 and actually made his start in to open source and into Fedora because he was a gamer and happened to come into Linux as a gamer, which I think is probably an unusual entry point for many people who are gamers and doing stuff with operating systems. Nevertheless, uh, after he started getting more involved with Fedora and writing some of these guides, like some people may know him from this installer that he helped put together for NVIDIA drivers on Fedora Linux, making it easier to install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers uh, over time. He started helping out with the then websites team and later helped revamp it with an awesome group of folks like Nasir, Graham, and Ramya to create the websites and apps team in 2020, 2021. And since 2021, he's worked at Red Hat as an engineer in the community Linux engineering team, uh, doing full-time work on Fedora apps, websites, services, and various other things in our Fedora Linux universe. So welcome, Akashdeep, to the Fedora Studio session. Uh, but we're actually here to talk about this really interesting tool that you put together during this last release cycle. And we're hoping to actually have some uh, opportunities for people to see this out in the field over our next uh, few months at some of the events where Fedora will be. However, before we get into SyncStar, I figured let's introduce folks uh, to you and a little bit about what you do in the Fedora community. So can you tell us a little bit about what your role is in the Fedora community and what does a day in the life look like for Akashdeep? Thank you, Justin. Um, hey folks, Akashdeep Dhar here. For the most part, I develop and maintain infrastructure applications for Fedora infrastructure, being a part of the community as well as you know serving the community with the folks uh, who are voluntary contributors, you know, onboarding them into how things work in Fedora infrastructure and, you know, helping them understand just how things work. Uh, mentorship has been a big part in what I do. So if I were to say something interesting about the day job that I do, it is that I get to work with the community folks full time. And I really try to keep sure that uh, I am making my work as visible to people as much as I can. Apart from that, I also am serving as an elected representative in Fedora Council since Fedora Linux 39. And my term ends by the end of this release cycle, that is of Fedora Linux 41. But yeah, that is pretty much about it about myself. Over to you, Justin. Yeah, so maybe you could tell us a little bit about, you know, as some of the work that you do as an engineer in Fedora infrastructure and around Fedora community. Uh, what's some of the stuff that you do or, or maybe what's something that people wouldn't expect that you do in your job well um people would expect me to write a lot of code and deploy stuff you know all uh, glossy and all technical stuff but a lot many times we're just sitting wondering just what decisions can be crucial in terms of a technological point of view what needs to be done and what needs not you know things like investigating frameworks, investigating libraries as a part of our team called ARC, or Advanced Reconnaissance Crew inside of my team. Uh, there's a small team where we investigate just what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, as well as the entire plan and the framework of uh, the task. And this is something that people don't expect. They're like, hey, uh, that's, that's like literature review. And I'm like, yeah, that's like the foundation. That is what we write the code up on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, the research part is, of course, very important before we jump in and try to do something together with community. And anyone who spends some time in the Fedora contributor community knows how much we love to discuss things and uh, and talk about things. So it's really interesting work to do all this kind of research and preparing, like you know, what frameworks make the most sense, not just from technology point of view but also from a community point of view and like what are things that people are already using in the project and what are things that are going to be easier for people to contribute with. So that makes sense. Let's go ahead and switch over the conversation here to talk about this little thing called SyncStar. So I happen to know quite a bit about this already and I've been following the journey of the 
the application as you've been working on it. But why don't you go ahead and give us just a basic introduction to what is this tool? How does it work? And why would people want to use it? Awesome. Yeah. So since the, uh, it's based upon the idea of one of the earlier contributors of Fedora project, David Lapsky, or Sankui, as people might know them with this name, they worked on this project called Fedorator back in the day. Uh, it was a Raspberry Pi powered device with a touch screen, and it had USB ports attached to it so that you can come right in with your flash drives, or if Fedora project is uh, giving away flash drives with Fedora brand, you never know but get them uh, flashed with Fedora Linux on the top of them, the distribution so that you know uh, you can not only use Fedora Linux for yourself, but also with friends. And of course, you know it's USB flash drive. So once you're done, you can always use it for something else. Um, that was something that was introduced back in the day. Of course, uh, COVID happened and the semiconductor prices rose, which made it so difficult for us to get Raspberry Pis and the touch screen and whatnot. Uh, well, Thanks for sharing the screen, Justin. This is what it looked like. And it was a bit expensive after the COVID when we slowly started re-continuing re, uh, the in-person conferences. And then I started thinking that how about we introduce something like this again, minus the barriers that would come due to the absence of you know, things like 3D printing, things like uh, the touch screen that's required for a device like this and the Raspberry Pi and, of course, a custom-built PCB for it. How about we make use of things like our smartphones or the laptops that we have and try to achieve the same thing? And that is how SyncStar was born. Awesome. So SyncStar is a web application, so it's something that you, know, you can use on your computer. You don't have to build and assemble it like uh, the old federators, which were really cool and awesome when we first did that. But of course, like you said, there were all these challenges and like both both creating new ones, you had to like 3D print something, the chassis and get the touch screen and get all the hardware. But then also, you know, you have to update it. There's an operating system underneath it. There's a Raspberry Pi, stuff gets old. You stop getting updates after a while. So there's definitely a maintenance cost that came with those machines. But I really like this approach that you've taken with SyncStar because it makes it a lot more accessible for folks on any device, on any hardware, to set this up and create kind of that kiosk-like experience where people can show up, pop in a USB drive, and get their favorite version of any Linux distribution. So why don't you walk us through the user interface here and show us a little bit on like how this works and how people can use it. Totally. So SyncStar, uh, at the very core of it, is nothing but a fancy wrapper around DD. That's you know the utility that you use to copy disk images into the uh, drive, or well, copy images from the drive onto your uh, you know internal drive to make a backup. You know, basically, it's nothing but that. But it is based on Flask application that has you know periodic um, AJAX requests sent to the server with a celery-based task queue so that you know if you were to ask for a certain device to be flashed, it won't hold the queue until uh, that flashing process is done. Because let's be honest, you know, flashing takes some time, especially if you're using something as low as a USB 2.0 hard drive. But the uh, interface looks like this. You'll get to see the images that are available for consumption. Over here, I have four of these where I have Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch Linux, Fedora, everything 38. Uh, by the time we're talking about this, Fedora 41 is out now, so do give it a try. Um, and also we have the flash drives over here, and I'm gonna select a faster one for the sake of this conversation. Uh, and of course, then I'm gonna have to select which operating system exactly is it that I'm gonna install. So I'm gonna go ahead with Fedora Server Rawhide because we like to live on the edge. Rawhide, if folks uh, who don't know, is the development version of Fedora uh, that has the most recent packages. It is uh, not a lot stable, but it's also maintained for the testing purposes. But as you can see, the testing is uh, progressing, but that doesn't mean that I cannot concurrently flash one more drive, because guess what? I can. Well, not the drive that I, that's flashing right now. Let's select the other one. But on the other one, let's select Arch Linux because why not? Let's get those uh, 
uh, you know, bragging rights. I use Arch, by the way. So clicking on it, and that started. So basically, this makes use of uh, asynchronous task queue called Celery that takes control of DD and does all these things on the behalf of the uh, application. And once it's done, people can take those flash drives for themselves. And this is supposed to be simple by design. I really made, uh, made sure that people can come there, plug it in, do their stuff, and uh, you know, flash their uh, flash drives and then leave without having to worry about just what's happening behind the scenes. It's designed uh, with the simplicity kept in mind. Yeah, and you know, I feel like, of course, the distro hopper crowd out there, I think will get a kick out of this tool because it's pretty easy, quick and efficient to flash between different distros on different flash drives. But we actually are gonna have some opportunities, we're hoping in the next couple of months to show this off in some of our actual booths and events that we do. Uh, I know Akashdeep, you're helping out with the planning for GNOME Asia, which will be in Bangalore, India, in just about less than a month from, well, from when we're recording this. Um, and then in February, uh, there's the event in Europe, FOSDEM, where Fedora in Brussels in Belgium, uh, where Fedora usually always has a booth there. And we're hoping to be able to uh, bring this tool out there in the field. So anybody that wants to flash the latest version of Fedora Linux or, you know, any other version of something, um, we'll have this all queued up and ready to show off for folks so they can actually try to take it for a spin. But I'm really excited about that part because we're going to be uh, trying to use this more at our events going forward. And not just for like these big official events, but anyone who's doing a Fedora release party or some local event, like, hey, this is a really easy way to get Fedora into people's hands. So I really appreciate the time that you took with me today, Akash, to, to go through this tool and talk about your work on it. It has been really cool to see it over the last uh, couple months as you've been working on it and iterating on it. Maybe before we wrap up the conversation for today, could you give us some calls to action? Like, hey, where can people find out more? Where can they install this? Or maybe they want to contribute and get involved. Where can people go to find out more about SyncStar? Totally. So SyncStar can be found on my GitHub page. Uh, the link should be in the description of the video. Um, it has near 100% uh, test coverage, so you should be finding it easier to contribute to. But if you want to use it, it's available on Python package index as well as on the official Fedora Linux repository. So you can totally do sudo dnf install SyncStar and have your own SyncStar device up and going in no time. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited for us to start getting this out in the field, getting this into some of our Fedora booth laptops that we have. Uh, and I think this is really going to help us solve a, uh, a challenge that, like, as someone, I was there in the room when we built the first Federators at Flock 2017, and I thought it was such a great idea because I had done some booths and events with Fedora by then. Uh, but once, you know, the hardware maintenance challenges came in and stuff started to break and it wasn't super easy to fix, um, we never quite have something to replace it. So I'm really happy to see something like this. I think it's a tool that definitely fits the Fedora use case, but also anyone from any community, any distro community can jump in and use this tool. So it also has that uh, wide applicability here as well. Well, with that, we are at the end of our slot. So thanks so much, Akash, for sitting down and talking with us on the Fedora Studio. Uh, we'll be debuting this at the Fedora Linux 41 release party. Of course, anyone that's watching this now is probably, uh, we were already past that point, but of course, SyncStar is out there irregardless of the Fedora Linux 41 release cycle. So I hope folks will check it out and take it for a spin. Thanks again for your time today, Akashdeep. Thanks for having me, Justin. See you folks around.